Hello everyone, my name is Jamie McQuaid from Magnet Forensics and today we have a quick video to help you get started with Magnet Axiom. Um, previous videos we've gone through uh, how to load in computer, mobile and cloud evidence. Uh, as we see here I've got uh, a little mix of everything here, some cloud, some computer and some mobile images uh, all loaded in for my case already. Um, in this video we're going to go through some of the additional processing details, the artifacts and uh, getting our case ready to process. So we've already got the evidence loaded it up the case details are already set let's jump right into the uh, processing details first thing up we've got keyword searching so you can add keyword lists or individual keywords to uh, to axiom uh, you can see I've got some lists already uh, loaded in here if I want to use them for this case I just click enable and they get loaded in here now the lists are persistent between cases so if you load one in it'll be available to you for the next case you can just choose to enable it or disable it uh, as you please. Uh, for individual keywords you might have for a specific case, you can just add individual ones. If you've only got one or two um, keywords that you want to add, um, you can add those in and uh, they'll stay there uh, just for this case and uh, you'll have to load them in next time if you want to use them again. They're not persistent. So we've got those ones in there. You can also uh, use regexes. Um, so we've got, uh, I got a predefined set here of uh, email addresses, phone numbers, IP addresses, those types of things that you might want to look for. Um, so I've got that in a list that you can load in as well. Now the default search type is an artifact search, but we have options between an artifacts or an all content search. Uh, the difference between the two, uh, all content search, most people would be familiar with from other uh, forensics tools. Basically it's a binary search across all the data. Um, you choose your encoding type. For this one, we've got ASCII and UTF-8. Um, you do your, your encoding type, whatever encoding you want to use for it, and you go through and it will just do a search across everything for whatever keywords you have there. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. You can either do uh, the encoding based on the list or the individual keywords. Um, it's up to you. Um, the other search, uh, other search is the artifact search. And basically what that will do is search through not everything, but all the artifacts. And there's pros and cons to both of these. Uh, the all content search is good because it's going to search everything, but the downside is it's going to take longer. And if anything's encrypted or encoded, it will not pick that up because uh, it doesn't know how to decrypt or decode it. However, the artifact search, while it will not search the entire disk, it'll just search anything that's an artifact. Generally, we have artifacts to cover most uh, scenarios. Um, it will search all the content of uh, emails, documents, chats, or any other artifact that we have, and it'll search uh, the metadata and content for those as well. The added bonus is it's quicker and it uh, allows you to decrypt or decode anything um, that we know how to decrypt or decode in the artifacts. So you get a, a, a little bit bonus there as well. Both searches are great. It completely depends on your type of investigation. Um, you can always follow up and do another search later on. This is just the first search you do. I usually start with the artifact search because uh, it's quicker, um, but I could always go back and do the all content search one uh, later on. So I'll leave the uh, artifacts one in there and I'll add my keyword list in there uh, just to have a, a list. Next up, we have is hash values. So uh, with Axiom, you can calculate the hash values for all the files, uh, either MD5 or SHA-1, uh, and we have a number, a number of different lists you could load in. First one being uh, tagging files with matching hash values. This is a simple one. You'll add a line separated text file of MD5 or SHA-1 hashes, and we'll just find any matches for it. Doesn't matter if it's a good or a bad hash list. It could be good files, bad files. It doesn't matter. You add your list in um, and tag it as whatever you want. It could be intellectual property, malware. It could be whatever you want to, to look for. It just brings those up to the top. The next list is ignoring non-relevant files. Um, this is kind of the opposite of the last one. Basically what you would do is you would load this list in and ignore any files that come up. Often, often Windows come pre-installed with a lot of system files, DLLs, icons, stuff like that you don't really care about. These are where you can load those in and we'll just ignore those and, uh, and that way it's less to go through. Uh, the NSRL list is a common one that a lot of people use. I've got them loaded in here and I've got one for computer, Android and iOS devices. And again, it's not gonna eliminate everything but it will uh, help uh, get rid of some of the extra noise that you might have in your case. Um, and again, the, the hash lists here are persistent between cases. So once you load them in, um, you're, uh, you're good to go. You can just enable or disable it as you see fit. One thing to note, as you're loading it in, uh, I've got, these are several million in size, so they can take a while to load in. If it's going really slow, make sure you have Windows Defender disabled. That's a common uh, scenario where Windows Defender will slow down the loading of the hash list significantly. So make sure Windows Defender active scanning is, is disabled, especially when you're loading in hash lists. 
The next screen here is categorizing pictures and video. And this is specifically around for uh, law enforcement doing uh, child abuse uh, or child exploitation investigations. They may be using either Project Vic or Cade files. Uh, these are pre-categorized picture and video hash lists. Um, I've got one loaded in here already. It's a uh, pre-categories, category zero, one, two, three. And you can see that it's uh, loaded in there, ready to go. They come in a JSON format, so that's a little different than the uh, the text files on the previous screen. And uh, we also have the ability to enable photo DNA for those in law enforcement as well. It's disabled by default, but if you'd like to use it, just hit edit and go through the steps to enable it. Uh, we'll uh, give you an unlock code to, uh, to uh, enable it in your uh, your tool if you're law enforcement. The next screen is the Dynamic App Finder. So finding more artifacts here, Dynamic App Finder has been around for a long time. For us, we've had it in IEF and we brought it into Axiom and we've actually added to it since then. Basically what it does is it goes out and looks for common um, apps that may be um, interesting to you, but not an actual supported artifact that we have down here, which I'll get to in a second. So if I enable this, it'll go out and look for uh, chat programs or uh, anything with geolocation data or anything like that, that may be of interest to you. And we just kind of bring it up and say, hey, here's a database that uh, looks like it has some chats in it or something like that. Um, maybe you want to take a look at it. And uh, Dynamic App Finder will do that for you automatically. So it's, uh, it's a nice thing uh, in, in case your users may be using apps that aren't as popular or um, maybe something that we are unaware of. It might be a new app that uh, nobody supports yet. We will still uh, search for it and we still may um, pick that up uh, during our processing. Uh, so I'd leave that on there and you never know what you'll get. Now we've got the artifacts. So because I've got computer, mobile, and cloud artifacts in here, we've got all three, but depending on what evidence you load in, you'll see uh, some of these grayed out if you don't load them all in. Um, we can see computer, mobile, and cloud. For the computer ones, you can see there's a lot of different artifacts here and they're all broken out by category. You can take a look, there's chat ones, cloud storage, documents, emails. There's lots of um, different, uh, uh, items here. The memory one's grayed out because I didn't load a memory image in here, um, but if I had there, you could make use of the memory artifacts. Um, but you can see by default, most of them are checked off. I usually leave that unless I'm looking for something specific. Obviously, the more you have checked off, the longer it takes, but it's nice if you're not really sure what you're going to be looking for. If you know exactly what you're looking for and you want to go in and say, I just want to look for pictures, clear everything out, go to media and enable pictures or, or any sort of combination uh, that way. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Other Otherwise, we could go down to the mobile ones and the same sort of thing. You get a completely different set of artifacts um, there. You get uh, all the different categories in that. You got some IoT stuff there. And these are mobile specific ones, uh, obviously a little bit different than uh, the computer ones. And then finally, again, depending on what uh, cloud artifacts you add in here, I added some uh, some Dropbox, uh, Facebook, Google, um, just uh, any sort of combination there. So you can see we've got uh, a mix of uh, sources and, and artifacts available there as well. So I'm going to leave uh, what I've got there. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to leave it as it is. Hit uh, analyze evidence, and you can see at the end here we've got uh, uh, a finalized set here um, ready to go. I would hit analyze evidence, and it would begin processing. So I could uh, hit go there. It'll uh, cache some photo DNA hashes because I loaded in the, the photo DNA ones just a second ago. You can see up here, and it would just start going through. It's going to start with the acquisitions of the uh, the cloud data, and then it would just scroll down and go all the way through and do the acquisitions and then the processing. I'm going to stop the video here. When we're done, we'll go up. Uh, pick up on another video um, talking about the uh, the results of, uh, of the search and uh, um, taking a look at the data on the other side. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.